Hello everybody and welcome to this video. In today's video I will be doing some computer maintenance. There's nothing special about it. I will just be maintaining my computer so I'll be cleaning it. I'll be moving a hard drive back over to my NAS because I did move it from my NAS to my computer because I was experimenting with transfer speeds and stability and things like that. But now I've finished that can go back in the NAS uh, and I'll also be balancing out the airflow because at the moment the airflow in my case is a negative pressure meaning that there is more exhaust than there is in intake when it comes to airflow. I'll explain that in a bit more detail later when I'm actually working on my computer. But yeah, that's what today's video is going to be. It's just a simple computer maintenance video. At the start of the video when I was talking about fans and airflow, this is what I was on about. I only have one intake fan at the front, but I have two exhaust fans, those being this one at the top of the case here, and the other one on my power supply there. Now the reason why I have two exhaust fans and only one intake fan is because originally I did have two intake fans and two exhaust fans which would therefore balance out the airflow but I've since accidentally broke one of my intake fans as a video of it on my channel meaning I now only have one intake fan but I've just left the two exhaust fans because I never really thought twice about it. But because there are more exhaust fans here and here than there are intake fans over here, when the side of the case is on, it does create a negative pressure with inside the case. Therefore, one of these exhaust fans will need to compensate for the lack of an intake fan by drawing in air through every small little crevice in the case. So whether that is through this mesh here or through the mesh in these PCIe bracket things or whether it's through the mesh on the floor of the case or whatever it may be it will need to be drawing in air from somewhere around the case. So what I'm going to do to balance out my airflow so I only have one intake fan and one exhaust fan is I'm just going to flip my power supply upside down so the fan will be underneath the case getting airflow from below the case. Now I'm not worried about suffocating my power supply because my case has got these meshes all the way across and also my computer sits on a block of wood so it's not like the carpet is going to suffocate it. And what that also means is my cable management will be a bit neater because the cables will no longer need to trail down here. I'll instead have this pretty much next to this grommet here so I can just feed them straight through behind the motherboard tray which hopefully means my graphics card power supply cable will be long enough to actually go behind the motherboard because at the moment there's not enough cable length for it to go behind the motherboard so I just have it sort of drooping across in front here. So that's what I plan to do today and of course another thing that I plan to do is clean up all this dust. <laughs> that is horrible. So now that I've took my hard drive cage out I can take out this hard drive which is the one I'm going to be putting back in my NAS because I've finished experimenting and doing tests and stuff that I was doing. So I need to unscrew it from the Fractal Design hard drive holder thing and put it on my NAS hard drive holder thing. So I shall do that. And now all I need to do is put this back in my NAS and then set it up so that I'm able to use it on a Windows computer. So now what I'm going to do is take my power supply out because like I said I do need to flip it over and well basically re-cable manage because I'll be rerouting the cables and stuff so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Careful of the fan. Okay. I should really put my computer on that table at the minute so I can actually walk around it rather than just having it on this box. I 
and there's my power supply removed from my system. So now I need to go and dust off all of these different components. So I'll get on with doing that. But before I get in, I will mention don't use a hoover to clean your computer, especially around the motherboard and the PCB areas. I am just using the hoover to clean the fans and the hard drive cases and the actual case. I will not be hoovering the motherboard or anything like that. But yeah, if you are cleaning your computer, I would recommend you don't use a hoover and you in fact use compressed air. Anyway, with all of that said, let's get on to me cleaning these. There's all of the components that go inside the case cleaned, excluding the motherboard and heatsink which are still in the case. But now I need to clean the actual case itself, so I'll, uh, I'll get on with doing that and I'll set up the camera in a different place so you can see it's a bit easier and things like that. I know some people are probably going to mention that I'm cleaning a computer component using a hoover with the brush attachment, but if you notice, I'm just cleaning the heatsink, I'm not cleaning the actual motherboard with the hoover. So, yeah, I thought I'd just point that out, because if I didn't, someone is bound to comment about what I just did, but yeah.
Here I am not vacuuming the motherboard as I would recommend against that. Instead I am holding the vacuum nozzle at about 15 centimeters or 6 inches above the motherboard creating an updraft for the dust to be caught into that I am lifting with a soft paintbrush therefore preventing it from landing elsewhere in the case or on the motherboard. However, if you are cleaning your computer, I would still recommend you use compressed air if you have any. But I don't have any, which is why I'm cleaning my computer in this way. There's everything all dusted off and cleaned, now all I need to do is reassemble the computer. So the first thing I'll do is put the power supply in, because that way I can plug in my CPU power and my 24 pin motherboard power, and with those cables in place, from there I can figure out how to cable manage all of the other cables. In fact, hang on, no, the first thing I'm going to do is put the fans back in the case. I've just realised I've taken all the fans off and cleaned them all, and I have them all here, so I need to put these back on. Looks like this is the one for the fan screws, these four here for this rear fan. So those four it shall be. This fan goes up here as an outtake fan. That goes up there and the cable goes through there. I can just get one screw in. It's going to be very awkward doing it with my fingers. Right, I'm going to stop talking now and just get on with, well, putting the fans back in. This is why I used the other hard drive cage because this one's a nightmare to set up when you've got a 3.5 and a 2.5 inch drive. And before anyone comments, yes, I know I'm plugging in the connectors at this side. I am aware I can turn the drive around and plug the connectors in from the other side, but I prefer it like this because then I only need to remove one side panel to gain access to the drives, which is why I particularly mount mine the way I've mounted this. I think I'll probably just hang this cage up at the top and remove this one that I specially put in earlier. Let's try that again. I know before I had my hard drive in the bottom, 
in the bottom bay like that and then I just had the SATA cable just coming down and plugging in like that but I'm looking to optimize like cable management so what I will probably do is put that up like that put my SSD on top like sort of two spaces above the hard drive get my power cable plug that in there and plug it in there SATA cable plug that in there in there. I really need to sort this out now. What's this? That's my hard drive power which before I didn't have going behind the motherboard tray. Hmm. Right. Well, let's just try and get all of these somewhat neatly managed you see this just looks a mess here I think what I am going to do is actually turn my hard drive and SSD around on this little metal thing that they're mounted to so that way the IO is at the back here so I can have it sort of neatly arranged here instead of me having access to the IO at this side so I'll do that. You know when I thought about cleaning my computer this morning I didn't realise it would take this long and be this tedious. Because in a minute, oh, well, literally in a minute I'm going to need to stop recording and go put the camera on charge because the, is now, the battery icon is now flashing basically saying it's going to cut out any second. But quickly before it dies what I'm going to do is flip my hard drive and SSD around in this like white bay thing they're attached to put them in and try and get the cables managed regarding this storage for the hard drive and SSD and then I'll pick up the recording again after I've done that because this could take a while and I don't want this final video to be 40-50 minutes long of just me cleaning my computer and messing about with it and stuff so yeah I'll be back once I've got all of this sorted and when the camera has charged I have now completed the cable management as best as I could due to there being now more cables going around the back of the motherboard tray such as my uh, storage power cable and my GPU power cable it does mean there is a big bunch of cables at the back I've tried to cable manage them as much as I can but as you can see they are still a bit of a mess there but I'm, I'm not going to be worried about that so that's not a concern as you can see I have flipped my SSD and my hard drive around so the connectors are at the other side therefore better allowing the cables to go behind the motherboard tray and I've also swapped out my old SATA cables for these Pro Slim SATA cables so now if I just zoom in and rotate the camera a bit you can now see the very thin little SATA cables that I have used I bought these SATA cables about a year and a half ago and I've never used them I just found them in the box and then I remembered I bought them but for some reason I never swapped them over so now I've done cable management and all kinds of stuff I've now installed the slim SATA cables instead of these more traditional style SATA cables so yeah I've done that and now all I need to do is put my graphics card back in and we're not aligning why are we not aligning there we go Please tell me the cable's long enough. Yes, it is. Finally, I no longer have my GPU's power cable going like from the power supply and then looping all in front of everything. It now goes behind the motherboard tray. Now I just need to screw my graphics card in. There is my computer cleaned and put back together. Now all I need to do is show you the final product which will be my cleaned and cable managed computer. So let's get into that. So here is my final cleaned and better cable managed system. So I guess I'll start with the power supply as that was the main focus of this video. I have now flipped it over so the fan is on the bottom of the power supply therefore balancing out the airflow in the case as I have one intake fan as you can see there and one exhaust fan which is there so the airflow inside the case is balanced 
and it also gives the case a much cleaner appearance. My graphics card power, which is this cable, now goes from the power supply up and around behind the motherboard tray and out of that grommet there and just plugs in there and the same with my storage power SATA which is that cable which goes down there behind the motherboard tray and plugs in there. So now I no longer have cables drooping across in front of everything going from my power supply to the graphics card and my power supply to the storage up here. Everything goes behind the motherboard tray and is appropriately routed from there as I will now show you. But just quickly before I do you can also see that I have cleaned my computer and it's now dust free. In case you are wondering what this is, this is just a little cardboard GPU brace that I made which is just some cardboard that I folded up, cut to the correct height, folded up and then wrapped some fragile packaging tape around it just to keep it in its folded state and all that does it just goes below my GPU shroud and keeps my GPU level to stop it from drooping down and putting stress on the PCIe connector which is plugged into on the motherboard. The last thing I will address while being at this side of the computer and that is my heatsinks fan location for my CPU. Now I've got this fan and heatsink combination set up in a pull configuration therefore instead of the fan being on the right hand side of the heatsink and pushing air through the heatsink it's in fact on the back of the heatsink or the left hand side of the heatsink from this perspective pulling air through the heatsink and to prove this to you if I zoom in and realign the camera we can see the airflow arrow on the fan which is right to left Therefore it is taking air from the right hand side and moving it to the left hand side which is the same direction as the airflow in my case. From this perspective my case brings in air from the front on the right over here, moves it across to the left and exhausts it up at this fan here, airflow moving right to left from this perspective. So to those people commenting who are saying that I have the fan on my CPU's heatsink the wrong way around, I don't. I just have my configuration set up in a pull configuration as opposed to a push configuration. And the reason why it's in a pull configuration is because my old Z77 system had tall RAM dims so I couldn't mount a push configuration on the fan with my old system. So I just set it up in a pull configuration and I've never switched it back even though I have upgraded my system because I'm not having any thermal issues at all. And because I'm not having any thermal issues I'm not going to bother changing something back when it's working perfectly fine in its current configuration. What I'm going to do now is flip my computer around and show you the rear of the motherboard tray and just how I've managed the cables there. And this is what my computer looks like behind the motherboard tray basically where all of the cables are hiding so you don't see them from the front. So yeah, I guess I'll just go over them really. Down here we've got the main grommet where all of the power supplies cables come through as I showed you on the other side. From there I've got my CPU power just going up and feeding through the top there. This cable is a fan cable that I have on an extension because the fan cable is not long enough by itself and there's this other cable that goes up I've actually forgot what that cable is but whatever it is I've looped it up and around and across the top here and then coming out and going up here we have the majority of the cables so this braided one here this is a motherboard's 24 pin power this cable here is the graphics cards power and then I've got all of these cables here which come from the front IO and they just run down there and they plug in where appropriate on the motherboard and coming through here we can just about see it this cable through here this one that's my SATA power which just runs down there and then up to my SATA drives there my SSD my hard drives supplying power to those and of course I have these like ultra thin SATA cables that I forgot I bought but I found them and installed them they just loop from the storage and go through that grommet you can just about see there where the cables are going through and just plug into the SATA connectors on my motherboard and that's really it for behind the motherboard tray. I'd say it is fairly managed and it is quite pleasing and satisfying to look at. But I do believe there are improvements that could be made. But that doesn't bother me. It's not a show computer. I'm not bothered about RGB, LEDs or flashing lights or anything like that. All I'm bothered about is practicality and can the computer handle the workflow that I need it to handle 
In my case with this computer, yes it can handle the workflow that I use it for and therefore that's all I really care about. My case the side panels don't have any windows on them so even though you can't see the cables, I do like to still have neat cable management so in the future when I do come to cleaning my computer I don't need to deal with a huge mess of cables. I prefer a much more sleeper aesthetic to it. Doesn't look like anything fancy but internally it is. If you know what I mean. If you're a car person you'll get the reference but if you're not a car person then you may get the reference but you might not. But yeah that's basically the cable management on my computer that I have done during this video and of course I clean my computer as well. And that brings us to the end of this video in which I clean and better cable manage my computer. Consider sticking around for part 2 in which I clean my NAS. I would have done it in this video but I didn't want this video to really be any longer than what it already is. So I've decided I'm going to be creating a part 2 in which I focus on just cleaning my NAS. But as for this video part 1, if you have enjoyed this video give it a like. If you haven't then give it a dislike. Consider subscribing to see future uploads and as always thank you for watching.